Today we're going to be uh, working on the rear tire of this Jetson Bolt uh, electric folding bike. And it's not just any flat, it's flat on the rear tire. So I'm a little bit curious to see how hard it is to uh, take this off so we could, you know, patch it or put a new tube in. One thing is, is these use the 14-inch uh, tires. And I couldn't find any place in town that stocks them, so I had to order them from the internet. I got a, a two-pack of them just to have them around since they're something that's not easy to come by. Seems to be coming from around the valve stem. I'm not real sure what that means, if it's patchable or if I need to put a new tube on it, but let's get in there and see. So this doesn't look like that bad of an operation. We have the kickstand is bolted through, and then the wire that goes to the motor, you know, these are sort of look like you can just wiggle it out of there, and then one zip tie on this side. And then over here, this is the uh, chain tensioner, and the chain is fairly tight. It doesn't squeeze a whole lot, so we'll try to mimic that when we put it back together. So let's just start with uh, snipping that zip tie loose and seeing if we can wiggle this out of where it sits. Ugh. Maybe from down here. Okay, yeah. All right, so that gives us a little bit of slack. I wonder if that's enough. Then I have a uh, three-quarter. Let's see how tight these are. Eat, 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 eat. Yeah, that's fairly tight, but not super bad. I'm going to take this all the way off to see, see what's going on here. So I think we're going to have to take this uh, caliper loose in order to slide this down. Let's get the other side going. Alright, so let's go ahead and loosen this tensioner a bit. I'm using a 10 millimeter on it. It's not quite not the right size, but it's, it's close enough. So we get that loose enough that we can remove it once the main bolt comes off. Let's see about loosening this. Alright, not bad. Let's see, do we have room to move up a bit? This might be a bit of an operation. Let's, all right, so let's remove it from this rear sprocket and up at the front side with a little bit of slack in here. Let's see if we can take it off, off here. There's a bit of a derailing system, but that'll give us more slack in the back. And then here, if we have enough slack, we can just get it all the way out of the way so we're almost free. We just gotta get that caliper out of the way. So I have an Allen wrench tool here, and this is a five millimeter Allen wrench. Let's just see if we can break it loose here. Yeah. Feels pretty good. And once we take this off, I think we can just drop it. So maybe this comes off. It'd be good to take this off before you get the wheel. Uh, loose that way you don't have to hold it and so all this blue stuff on these threads that's like that's locked tight trying to keep it from rattling apart on us that's a good idea to have I don't have any on hand so I don't think it's gonna go back on with any Loctite but if you have some might as well use it let's see then that can just slide down and now we got the wheel loose cool so I do have the bike upside down just for, you know, ease of access. And I have a chair so it's comfortable to work on. But I'm doing it in the driveway mostly for, you know, better lighting. So I put down this little scrap of carpet I have not to scratch everything up and make it gross. All right, let's uh, just pry this tire up. I think I got enough air out of here to do this. We're going to lose a little bit of paint on these rims with these metal tools. But that's just how it's going to have to be. Probably easier to start someplace other than right by the uh, valve stem, right? Get that up. And we'll get that up. And we'll just work our way around. Just 
do a little bite at a time wherever we can. And once you get a certain amount off, you might be able just to work it, work it off like that. They also make plastic pry tools. I guess I have those too. They seem kind of thick to me. Since they're plastic, they gotta be thicker to fit in there, right? But maybe I can drag with that just fine. <laughs> I'll say that. Let's just use some brute strength to finish this. It's a little awkward having the wheel tethered to the bike, but it's not that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start yanking the tube out. Let's see if I can push this valve stem in there far enough to get it out or if I'm going to have to take the whole tire loose. I'm not sure yet. There it is. So the tire, it just sort of like blew out internally I guess. You know? That's the only damage I can see. And what's strange about that is this rim is extremely smooth on the inside. It doesn't even have a place, uh, I mean, it doesn't even have a need for the, for the little inner liner to protect it from spokes. It's, it's just a, it's a smooth rim. So, I don't, I don't really understand how it could inflate in such a way it would have a bubble right there and explode, but it could happen. It looks like there's enough space there that, that I could patch it but there's all these other little defects on it where it looks like it might want to burst at the seam. So I might just go for a new tube. So one thing that is nice about the tube that it came with was it has this you know bent Schrader valve. So it's easier to plug into to put air into it. Uh, these replacements, they just have a, a straight one. So I don't know how that's going to look when it's all said and done. It's just this little thing here. And how much space is it going to have? Let me just shove that in there and take a look. It pushes far in there. So, yeah, that will be a bit of a hassle. Especially for like a bicycle pump. But, you know, that's not ideal. That's what we're doing. So I'm just going to... First get the tube shoved in here. Make sure it's flat and not cause me a problem. And then I'm gonna get the uh, the Schrader valve. I'm gonna shove it through the hole. I'm gonna use the valve cap to hold it in place so I don't lose it back in there. Now this is where you need to be real careful with your tools so you don't pinch your new tube. Because if you were to uh, go in here and 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 pick up that tube and you know, crush it against everything. You can be a little certain that you might get a flat, right? So let's just see how this stuff will go. I'll try with these plastic tools. See if they can actually do it. Oh, see, I just pinched it there, but I, that wasn't a whole lot of force. So now that we're under a little bit more force, these plastic ones are really not feeling like they're going to cut it. Maybe if we take this tiny little bite so we can do it. Uh. No, this broke that one. Let's go back to the metal. I'm kind of surprised that these tires fit as tight as they do because a lot of these Chinese products, these Chinese tires, they, they uh, they don't quite fit the rim and, and they they come off <laughs> like without any tools because there's barely there and, and you can just like rip them off when there's no air on it so i guess this is the problematic part with a thing like this is uh look how long this is and so even if you get that on the other thing you have to consider is is you know to tighten it up you have to do it like that but i'm just going to put enough air in here that uh, we can make sure that the tire's not pinched anywhere, not 
coming out. I mean, it looks real good to me before I start putting air in it. We'll just start with that. I'm going to untwist all the twisting that I did to this thing. I think, let's see. That looks like it wants to just ride there nicely. And then the, the cable was on the top side back here. So we're going to get this twisted like that. Make sure these washers are on the inside of, of both of these as we slide this into place. So first thing I want to do is get this chain back over here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the chain on the big sprocket up front. I'm going to have, have it on this one back here. Let's see about that tensioner. Right like that. I'm just going to have all this loosely sorted here. Now on this side we had the washer first. I think. Do we have it that way? No. We had the kickstand first. And then the washer. And the bolt. So we'll get that just a little bit where it should be. Let's go ahead and put this wire back on so over and through and then we'll go Ugh. over and through let's grab a zip tie All right, right through here I guess I'll just make sure it doesn't Accidentally get you know interference into the uh, the rotor. We'll snip that off. Oh, that feels a little sharp. Hopefully that doesn't get anybody. So while this is still loose enough to to move around a bit, I think that's a good time to put this brake caliper back on. And this one will tighten down all the way. Alright, so over here I'm going to tighten down the tensioner until, uh, until I like the, the chain tension. We're going to try to mimic what it had previously because that seemed to work really good. Let's see what that's doing. Maybe just a tiny bit more. Yeah, that seems about right. Now this wheel, it's a little crooked, only being tensioned from one side, so I'm going to pull it back like this. I don't know if you can see that flex I'm doing, but that'll get it where it's, it's running straight down the frame. And I'm going to tighten up this other side here. Let's see. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten this side up. See, so yeah, we're still pretty tight there. This roll is pretty good. The wheel's a little bit mounted wonky. I'm going to let the air out and, and readjust it. All right, so uh, yeah, I let all the air out and I just sort of squeezed all the way around it. I guess I should have filmed that. <laughs> and, and then now I like how the bead seems to be more consistent it's not as womp 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 so if we pedal this thing it's not nearly as whatever but i got it all tightened up everything in place i think we're done nice so we're going to the Blues Festival tonight, and I've already parked a car down there with coolers and chairs and stuff. So we're going to take our e-bikes out. But it's pretty, I mean this thing, we'll, we're going to be able to uh, we should stick this inside the 4Runner 
and keep it secure while we're gone. My big e-bike, I'm gonna have to lock it up somewhere and I uh, hope it doesn't disappear on me. So, I mean, this is, this is coming real handy. And so far it's been good and, and it's working well. So, uh, yeah. But anyways, as far as the tire change goes, it's not that bad. You know, it, it's a little bit more complicated than a regular bike, but it's, uh, it's really not anything to fuss over. You know, it's, it's not like changing the, the tube on, on my homemade one. That one's a nightmare. Got to take apart all kinds of stuff.